So Benny, b before we jump into the album, let's talk a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I mean, I understand that at some point in your life, you suffered a serious brain injury. I did. Um, and I should know your brain injury could have been catastrophic with you. Um, at the time, did you realize the severity of your condition and the implications it had on your health? Yeah, I, I did not actually. And, and thanks for asking. Uh, uh, so October is going to be eight years. Eight years. Since the brain injury. So in 2016, there was this really big national election going on. And, and people always ask me, you know, what are you registered as? I'm like, listen, I vote Christian. Just yes. I vote Christian. Yeah. If you line up with my Christian beliefs, you've got a great shot. I'm going to right. vote for it. Right. So, so I'm up late watching, and I fell asleep on a sofa. And at 6.30 the next morning, my alarm went off in the bedroom with my wife. So I'm like, man, that's not good. So I recall her opening the bedroom door, which was adjacent to my living room, and holding out the phone. And I also recall standing up because I saw her. And I've got a 20-minute hole that I hmm. cannot remember. I think it's God's way of protecting me. Like, you don't need to remember that. You don't have to recall any of it. Just know I stepped in and saved your life type of thing, right? So uh, she tells the neurosurgeons that when I got to the hardwood section of our living room and she handed me my phone and looked at me, I was completely horizontal. So And so the neurosurgeon's like, well, did he slip? Was there water, socks? No, no, no. They did, they, uh, when I fell, I fell flat, didn't catch myself, struck mm. the back of my head. I had a double fracture in the back of my skull, a frontal lobe crush, and an internal brain bleed going all at the same time. Um, do not remember a thing. So she said, I tried to crawl to our recliner, but she said, no, come lay down in the bed. So in my previous life, I was a, I was a Navy corpsman, a medic. And so you never lay anyone down with a, with a head injury because they could sleep into it. I wasn't with it. I got in the bed and just for your listeners or your viewers, it is amazing to me how in my early life when I was a Navy corpsman and I had all of that training, as I'm laying in the bed, I feel things and hear things. Like I'm looking and I recognize symptoms. And I looked at my wife, I said, we've got to go. Like we have to go now. So she was able to assist me to the truck and then we went to the hospital, into the emergency room. So many MRIs. I see you for observation because they didn't know what would happen if I would have a hemorrhage or anything. Uh, I was in the hospital for several days and then the neurosurgeon said, we're going to send you home. The only way the brain heals itself is you're going to sleep a lot. What do you do? And, and I'm like, well, I have an advertising agency. And they said, well, you don't now. <laughs> and my wife says, he also has a Christian band. And, and they go, you're definitely not doing that. The first month, I slept for 20 hours a day. Oh, my. Uh, Donna became a full-time RN. Every three hours, water, a Powerade, and an insurer because I wasn't eating. Sure. And that was the first month of my life. So the first month, I don't recall anything from the time I left the hospital. I don't recall any of it. Wow. So so how did such a, a traumatic ex experience impact your, your faith and your ministry, for that yeah. matter? So it did not during that time, right? Because I was just completely right. out You're of it. Recovering. And then as I came, as I, as I came out of it, I, I liken it. I liken it to this: when you first saved, you're on fire, right? Mm -hmm. People five miles out, they see you, they woo, he's on fire. And then as we become mature in our mm -hmm. faith, sometimes we get a little dormant, sort of like I feel the world is right now. And and you know, and somebody passes you, and you go, "Wow, I hope they just smelled smoke." And yeah. I find for me personally that you only have to almost die once, right? And my fire has been so reignited mm. since that point. It, I, I will talk to a tree, a fire hydrant. You know, they, and the Bible says even a rock's cry out and I find myself like I'll be in the garden looking at the rocks going, I can't hear you. It's, 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 a, it's a revived passion of my spirit. It, and, you know, people are like, did you doubt your faith ever? And it actually just wound up blowing up and becoming way stronger than it was as a Christian even prior to that, because I was doing music and everything before that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, spending some time and some press materials given to me and on your website, uh, I, I find that you've stated 
that, that God may have been using your traumatic brain injury to teach you to not be afraid. Um, hmm. What fears did you or do you still encounter? I mean, how has your reaction to fear changed? So now, now actually none. I'm, I'm a little dangerous now because I don't care. <laughs> cause I don't care. Um, one of the things my pastor taught me about fear, false evidence appearing real. And man, that has stuck with me mm. because the enemy has that. He has that weapon, right? We have the ultimate weapon in our in, in Jesus, who took care of all of it for us. So, so just that that transition of thought for placement, where I'm in, where why am you know the big here's a better answer is I used to worry about who I was, and now I know whose I am. Mm. And that's a that's a tremendous faith building difference, and especially coming from a near death experience. And then I, I still have no taste and no smell. Eight years later, nothing. And I'm Italian. I love food. Nothing. You have no taste. None whatsoever. Oh wow. <clears throat> None whatsoever. That must be hard. A, a, a soft drink tastes like water, but but fizzy. Mm -hmm. There's no flavor. I, I love Arnold Palmer's, right? Yeah. Like half lemonade, uh, half tea. Yeah. I feel the the lemon on the side of my tongue. There's absolutely zero flavor. I throw hot sauce on everything I eat because it makes me feel like I can taste it <laughs> because I can feel it. But there's nothing there for that. And so those are long-term effects. I had someone ask me, they said, "Are you have you prayed about it? And I'm like, well, absolutely. And they said, are you disappointed that you haven't gotten that back. And I said, well, you know, there was a guy, Jacob, who wrestled with God all night. And at the end of the night, God went boop, and he touched his hip, and he walked with a limp for the rest of his life as a reminder that he wrestled mm. with God. So for me, if the lack of the taste and the smell is my Jacob moment, I am absolutely incredibly thankful and okay with that because we're having a discussion today, right? Right, right. yeah. Now, I understand that you, you came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ um, later in life. I did. Um, what drew you to him then, and how did that, how did that change your life? Yeah, so, so having grown up in New Orleans, what, I had a secular rock band. When I had hair, I had a lot. <laughs> and uh, I had a secular rock band in New Orleans and, just, and, and went through a really bad divorce, both with her and the band. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, things happen. God uses them for a purpose. So I moved to Baton Rouge in 92. I was a floor manager for an auto ship, uh, automobile dealership. And this lady, Miss Linda, sweet Miss Linda, and I sold her a car and her husband a truck and her daughter a car. And she comes in when we were doing the deal for her daughter and she says, didn't you say you had a rock band? I said, I do. She says, why don't you come to my church? You would love our music. Our, our praise band is okay. great. And I said, well, what are you? And she says, I don't know what you're, what and I'm like, like I grew up Lutheran. So are you that? Are oh, you I Baptist? Or yeah. like, what are you? And she goes, mm, we're just straight out of the Bible. So I'm like, <laughs> I've heard about you people, and and so I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to confess to you, I lied to this lady for three months. She would call me every Monday. I didn't see you in church. I said I was busy. For three months, and then I went to a business function, and learned some biblical principles I'd never heard in my life. Mm. Being in church all the time. Never heard in my life. And so um, the following week, she says, I'm going to come pick you up. And I said, Miss Linda, you do not have to. So I said, I'll meet you. And she says, really? I said, what time? She says, 9.30. I said, okay. She says, are you, are you lying to me again? I know you've been lying. And I said, yes, I have. And no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so I recall, I got in the car. I'm driving down Highland Road in Baton Rouge, which is a historic road with big oak trees over the top. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear this voice on my shoulder saying, what are you doing? Like, where are you? you? You don't know people like this. You are an acolyte, son. You know, where are you going? It's the first time I knew what the devil sounded like. Mm. Literally knew what Satan sounded like. And so all of a sudden, I get all fired. And, and, and I'm, I'm quoting things I heard in this business meeting from a Christian businessman, right? I'm demanding seven times back everything Satan ever stole from me. And you're going to lose me today. I'm crying. I'm doing 70 and a 30. And I looked down, I'm like, okay, slow down. And I pulled up, and guess who was at the front door? Miss Linda. Big old smile, big old hug. 
It was amazing, the music was, the, the, the message was, and I went down for the altar call, fully not expecting anything, I don't think, but hit me like a ton of bricks. And my whole life had been, okay, I got past that. So you're just stacking it behind you, right? So I'm at the altar and when I went to back up, I could not, it was like a wall was behind me. Wow. And I just broke and I got saved that day. My life's been different ever since. Wow. Okay, let's talk about your music. Yeah. Um, if someone asked you to describe your music, how would you characterize it? I mean, what would you say? So so our music, that was a big thing when I got saved. I'm like, Lord, I have this music. What do you want me to do with it? I really don't want to do just tambourines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And um, so Christian music circles, we get compared to Seventh Time Down, Building 429, Third Day, Petra, Little Striper sometimes, Skillet sometimes. Striper was my very first Christian concert I went to before I was saved. I didn't know what was going on, but I thought it was awesome. Their message was incredible from the stage. They're still together. Yeah, still, still doing there. it. Yeah. And then on the on the secular side, people always, always compare it to like Boston, Journey, Bon Jovi. Okay, so the, straight ahead of rock thing. and roll. Yeah, but not, not heavy because when I'm writing, I don't, when I did the secular rock thing, you want to be famous. You just oh sure right, yeah. and we didn't write trashy things, but but I find now because God wants to use that and touch people that His message that He gives me, I don't write this stuff. I'm not that talented. Mm. It just it just comes from the Holy Spirit. I don't want to diminish His message. Now the music is a delivery platform, but I don't want to diminish His message for people if that makes sense. Sure, yeah, sure. So you've got a new album, it's called Yahweh Nisi. Yes. Um, why did the phrase Yahweh Nisi resonate so profoundly for you at this point in time? So, so <laughs> thank you for that question. I, uh, man, it's 2023 and things are rough. They are. <laughs> Uh, the sure. world needs Jesus more than they know. I pray over all these projects. Uh, Yahweh Nisi in the Hebraic, it's the Lord is my banner. And so um, and, and that term, for no other reason than God just put it into my spirit, was it, uh, so God and I have discussions a lot, and he was like, I'm so disappointed in the world. He says, and you know what? sort of maybe with Christians. and He says, look, there's millions of Christians in the world. There's a lot of evil going on in the world, people in high positions of power and, and all that. He says, I, why are my people silent and not willing to fight back? So he says, so I want a battle cry for me. And you've said that. You've said that this album is a, a war cry for Jesus. War cry, battle cry. You know, in biblical times, right, when armies went to war, they followed the standard bearer. Mm -hmm. And he had the standard and a banner. And look, banner left. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Army went left. Banner right, army went right. If you were the enemy and you saw the banner coming to you, that meant trouble, right? Mm -hmm. And in today's world, with, with all of the craziness and anti-biblical things happening. God's like, I need to rally my people so we can stand up against this. Time is short. I'm about to send my son back. So are you with me or are you against me? And he's like, let's, it, so when you write this song, that's what I want to do. I want it to stir people's spirits into action because right now the church is dormant and or dead and or quiet. And he's like, enough of that. It's time, it's time to go. Mm. And so that's where that came from. I want to right now, I, uh, I, I, I interview a lot of people, but um, oftentimes when I interview musicians, I like to like dig into the album a mm -hmm. little bit, talk about some of the songs. And I always bring up the term, well, you know, do a little VH1 storytellers with some of these songs. And veteran artists totally get that comment, but then I'll interview some of these young bands and they're like, whoa, what's VH1 storytellers? So I'm sure that you know what that I, is. I do. Um, so with that said, I'd like to just talk about two or three of the songs on the new album. Sure. And have you just kind of tell the story of how the, how the song came to be. Sure. If you don't mind. Okay, so let's start out, we're gonna, well, let's talk about the title track, Yahweh Nisi. Um, I'm sorry, Jesus Can Heal the World. Yeah, Jesus the Can Heal the World. The album is Yahweh Nisi. Correct, and that's the title track. And we just talked about that. Jesus Can Heal the World is the radio, the radio release right mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. we have on our radio. So Mikey Howard, 
uh, uh, producer, right? He, yeah. He's my producer, uh, Love Journey Music. He's also the front man and founder of Seventh Time Down. Yeah, I know that. And man, so sure. he, um, we did a show with them. And after he and I talked backstage for a bit, he's like, God is telling me, you know, produce you guys. I think, I think you have a message. And so we're two records post that oh, so you've meeting. Done a couple with Yeah, them. we did three yeah. days was our last one. And then Yahweh Nisi is this one. And Jesus can heal the world, actually. He brought to to us and he says, Let's let's do a co-write thing for this mm -hmm. thing. And mm -hmm. so and the where we are in the world today, do we need anything but that title? Jesus can heal the world. If you if you've been through a divorce, guess what? Jesus can heal that. If your children are like wandering away, but Jesus can heal that. If we're having all this gender confusion that it seems like the world keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, Jesus can heal that. If your business is kind of upside down and you don't know what's going on, Jesus can heal that. Jesus can heal anything. I think it's a message that's lacking in the world today. Yeah, well, fantastic. So, yeah. Let's move now to Daddy's song. Yeah. Um, I understand the song's getting a really good response it is. right now. Yeah, it is. Um, why do you think that single has resonated so with people? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So this one's personal. Um, oh, okay. Well, um, am I going to make you cry? Maybe. Um, okay. The as a journalist, you love doing that. You anyway, do. Sorry, buddy. Go you on, do. Go on. Um, <laughs> I went. I went and did the vocal. We did a Christmas. We did a version of We Three Kings for Christmas. So I had to go to Mikey's studio and we, we were doing the vocals for that. Mm -hmm. And I had mentioned to him, my dad had passed. Um, he had a quintuple, he, all of dad's plumbing got redone over the course of his life, heart and all this. And uh, we thought we'd lose him to that. And then one day he had a pain in his hip and they went to the, they went to the doctors and PET scans us, and they said, you've got cancer. And my dad said, how bad? They said, like, get your stuff in order. Wow. Um, nine days from diagnosis to knocking on heaven's door. So in the last couple of days of his life, we had a discussion, dad and I did. And uh, I'm like, so dad, not only do you have a, not only do you have a seat at the buffet table, you have a name tag set out. So I need you to tell me you know where you're going. Mm. So that's a tough conversation for well, any child and parent. Needed. And, and and so his nickname for me is Pastor Boy, because I'm ordained. So he's like, Yes, Pastor Boy, I know where I'm going. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Dad, any other any other day, great joke. I need I need I need if not for you for me. And he goes, Well, Jesus died and he rose again, and I believe that. I'm going to heaven, right? I'm like, You are in fact correct. Mm. doesn't matter what the doctors tell you. You're about to be immaculately healed. I said, I'm going to be really blunt and straight with you. It's going to suck for us. It's going to be great for you. But mm. my joy now is that I know where you live. Yeah. And I know I'll, I'll meet you, you there. And so I'll meet yeah. you there. And God said, that's a message for people who have been through loss. And they need to know that even though there's been loss in their life, there's a joy when we're rooted in, in, in our faith and we know where our loved ones are. And so when I was doing the Christmas song with Mikey, he was like, I, I, how's that going? And I said, well, I'm halfway there, whatever. And he says, I would love to just hmm. co-write it out with you. So he and I tagged up on the rest and, and it's just there. When we play it live, it's just, you can see the effect on people because if you've lost someone there's there's joy. It's saddening, but there's joy in it, right? So that's important. When, when we're performing, I tell people all the time, when we're performing, if you do not feel the love of Jesus, regardless of the tempo of the song, what we're doing, if you do not feel the love of Jesus cross the footlights, we're doing something wrong and we're missing our calling. We could go be a party band or something. Nothing against party bands. Yeah. But we're missing, we're missing our calling. So... Um, yeah, it's 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 humbling. It's a huge responsibility. Yeah. It's a huge responsibility when you say I'm doing Christian music. There's a lot to answer for. In God's eyes, mm. do not use my name for doing something, and then not be it. Yeah, and and I find with a lot of younger artists, 
you know, I mean, I know TikTok's a thing and the 15 minutes of fame thing is a thing, yeah. but you know, where's your artistry and where's your passion and where's your, where's your storytelling that, that God gives you to touch people? Because if you're not touching people, so I'm talking specifically like in Christian music, mm -hmm. if you're not touching people's hearts and their souls, if you're not pointing them to Jesus, you know, stop. Yeah, yeah. good stuff, good stuff. Um, you know, we as we all know, we've just come through three plus years of COVID and confusion and uncertainty and a lot of anxiety and depression and all kinds of stuff going on right now. Your release, you've released this album in the midst of all of that. So, you know, and I'm a firm believer that God has divine timing Me for too. everything. So my question for you is why is right now the right time for Yahweh Nisi to be available to people? Yeah, that's a great question. So, like my Navy medic really kicked in with the whole COVID thing. Mm. And I was like, you you know what truth is and what isn't or whatever. I really believe it was a, a tool that the devil used with all the crazy things that happened off of that. But I also think it was a tool by God knew it was going to happen. He knew how people were going to react. And I think, you know, God uncovered a lot of things that we would have never known had that not happened. So everything for a purpose, and you have to look at it in that realm, right? And I think coming out of it, and we're way late on the coming out of it thing, in my opinion, but, you know, right now, I think God is just flashing green lights everywhere for his people. Go, go, talk about it. Talk about me. Enough of this dreary, weary, woe is me stuff. I did not design my people for that. So go. And so I think the impetus that's happening right now is time is short. And God's like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So after people have had a chance to listen to Yahweh and Easy, I mean, what yeah. would you like to get, have your listeners get out of that experience? I mean, what's your greatest hope for this record? My greatest hope out of this record is that much like myself after my brain injury, that rekindling of mm. that fire. I mean, I hope that the Holy Ghost fire burns in them so hard they keep their air set on 65 because they can't stand it. <laughs> right and yeah. I, and i think as christians when we're that on fire and we're that in tune with what god is trying to do how can you not be uncomfortable if that makes sense yeah, sure. so i enjoy being uncomfortable i enjoy doing something and then having the holy spirit check me and say really benny really mm. did you really um, you know, a part of his check system is my wife. She's like, really? You know what you're doing? You know what you represent? Mm. Are you really representing it that way? And, 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 and for me, it's a check, right? If you don't get that check, I, when I grew up in my BC life, I'd always say, man, I have a gut check about that. And that is such baloney. And I found out that it's always been a check in your spirit, mm. always. And if you're not connected, it's a gut check. If you're rooted in Christ, it's it's a Holy Spirit check. And you better, better be observant of that. You better be wary and cognizant of it. And you better act on it. When God says move, we should do four things, right? M-O-V-E. That's the second acronym you've used today. Yeah. Don't yeah. think about it. If you do, you're replacing God's will with your thought. And mm. I don't want to, I'm responsible for enough when I get there. So I don't need to add on or pile on. And so <laughs> it's that. That's great. Uh, I know this project is out now. Yes. And you're in the middle of all that. Yeah. But what's next for you? Are you working on anything new? Yeah, we have, <clears throat> we, we've had, we have, excuse me, we have several ideas for some new songs. The, the, we just did the official video for, Jesus can heal the world. So that's on our YouTube page. Um, I need. I'm going to do a video for Yahweh Nisi, but this is going to wind up. The vision God's given me for it is going to be a mini movie. I oh, think. Wow. I mean, 200 plus people probably that's calling ambitious. People. Calling people out to war. We have a. We already have a, a river section mm -hmm. kind of picked out for right. oh it's it yeah yeah 
Yeah, that. And so, you know, but but if God gives you something, we have which is his best, we have to give our best. And I really want that song to shake people not just audibly, I wanted to shake them visually. And there was no way I could do a regular video like we just did for Jesus Can Heal the World. That's not gonna cut it. This 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 calls for more. So I'm just praying about that and, and praying he'll open the right doors for us to do it. My guys, my guys Richie and Gary who do all of our uh, video work, they're exceptional. And um, we're already talking about storyboards and everything, and my wife is just shaking her head, going, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm I mean, drawing it all. I mean that my drummer's got a shield made, looks like our bass drum head. I made <laughs> guitars for my guitar players right. that, out of wood that look like axes. So I'm already oh, starting. Oh, I'm I'm already starting to do yeah. things to have ready to go. So it's incremental. Wow. It's a process. That's great. It's exciting. So, so that, and then we're touring a new record between, you know, now going forward until we do some new stuff. How many, sh how many shows do you play a year, do you think? Well, well now, not, not many since right. COVID. But yeah, okay. So gotcha. we're trying So we're we're trying to tour like the I-10 quarter. We're in Baton Rouge, so Texas, Louisiana. But okay. We'll go anywhere. Sure. But um, for that, God's going to open those doors, and, and whoever he wants there will be there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I keep telling my guys in a band, I'm like, act like you've been there before. Perform like you're the headliner. Remember who's given us this. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the good. most important thing. Remember who's given us this position because it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Benny, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate yeah, I appreciate it. you having a visit.